Welcome, everyone. So glad you're able to join us today for HDL's latest California sales tax trends and forecast webinar. Uh, by way of an introduction, if uh, if you've been with us before, hopefully you, uh, you'll recognize us. I'm Bobby Young, Client Services Director here at HDL, and I'm joined today by both Brett Plum and Steve Vesely, fellow principals here with us, we all work on the team uh, meeting with clients each quarter to review and analyze sales tax revenue that your company, that your communities receive. So happy there. And uh, by way, also for HD, us at HDL, uh, we've been serving communities for over 37 years now, currently uh, represent and work with over 500 agencies that include cities, counties, and special districts. And we're blessed to maintain over a 99% client retention rate. So thank you all as clients and even as non-clients, we are so glad you're able to join us and start walking through the latest sales tax results that we have. Yeah, just a couple more. All right, splash results. We're looking at first quarter 2022 data today. As a reminder, it's calendar year first quarter, so the January, February, March timeframe right there at the beginning of the calendar year. A lot of dynamic things going on, but the splash there on the left side of the screen, very bottom circled for you, a large, very large 17% increase over first quarter 21. And even a year ago, we had already seen the economy start to reopen, consumers back in shopping. We had already talked last quarter about the phenomenal fourth quarter results. It just continued on. The economy, the beginning of the calendar year, roaring right straight through the holidays. We, uh, we had anticipated even a bit of a slowdown. We were forecasting about 11% gain. And you could see that it ended up becoming or results were about 6% higher than what we were forecasting. So no doubt, as you guys are looking at your coffers and, and looking at the sales tax revenue receipts that actually came in, uh, might be a little bit shocked. <laughs> and I can tell you right now, our entire team was uh, pleasantly surprised when we saw the results uh, up 17%. And um, yeah, whoops, sorry there. So two big categories. We're gonna be talking about all these categories throughout the presentation today, but just taking note of a couple of very large ones. Fuel and service stations, as we hit on, and we all have been experiencing extremely high gas prices and prices at the pump, 47% uh, gain. This is one category that definitely exceeded our expectations. And uh, rightfully so, I think we weren't anticipating uh, such uh, such the prices that we've been experiencing. Also, restaurants and hotels, strong, very strong, forty almost forty percent gain statewide. This is a category, obviously, that Tracy will be talking about later uh, in the presentation. But a a pleasant surprise for all of our communities. We know that staffing has been short at restaurants. We know prices have been higher, but this 40%, almost 40% gain statewide, really a testament to here, us here in the state as consumers and our desire to eat out uh, patronized restaurants. So it's uh, great results there. Then the probably one of the bigger surprises that, that caught us this quarter, autos and transportation up 15, an additional 15%. And for many of you that have a lot of car dealerships within your agencies, we have been talking throughout the pandemic period and post-pandemic period about how well autos were doing. We know that there's limited inventory, but statewide up 15% again. This is most certainly a category that blew us away. Um, it's both the good and the bad, and we'll talk about that and those feelings that we all have. Uh, but here in the first quarter, it contributed very strong to the overall uh, bottom line gains that we saw. Where did it happen? Where did it hit? Where did it come from? You can see there on the right side of the screen, all throughout the state, just about double digit gains. Far North, as uh, we all can understand, is a little bit limited with regards to its sales tax generators and didn't take as big of a hit during the pandemic. Uh, so the rebound and, and since we've seen it, uh, just a nice soft, uh, steady gain, but everywhere else, strong double digits. And no doubt the major industry group results you see to the, to the left contributed very heavily to, uh, to each one of those regions. As we go and gave you the results and kind of what we are looking at, what we've taken into consideration, this is just kind of all, you know, a microcosm of all the things going on in the economy, whether it be the continuing Russia and Ukraine crisis that's probably gone on longer than we had originally anticipated. 
still issues with supply chain and obviously that comes by way of demand consumer demand and kind of as we'll be talking about with regards to whether it be inflation and prices that you see just below that or interest rates and that all of that contributing there and working its way back through the supply chain then also wages uh, is a consideration you'll hear me talk just shortly here about unemployment and why that actually probably benefits the economy at least through the end of the calendar year is going to be benefiting the, the sales tax economy as we see it so let's touch really quickly on interest rates. Obviously, topic du jour for all of us. Uh, continuing to watch the Fed, uh, Fed Treasury, and what their anticipations are, and you can see uh, more to the right of the screen here as we look at the most recent meetings that uh, the Fed Treasury has had and the uh, dynamic gains or jumps that. Uh, They've been pushing up the Fed funds rate, uh, 25 basis points, 50 basis points, 75 just here this month. And with all anticipation of um, anywhere from 50 to 75 um, basis points next month, and it's July meeting, all with the goal, it appears like everything that we're reading, that the Fed funds rate should be around 3% come the end of the calendar year. So get ready to continue to hear the feds talk about the fed funds rate and increasing uh, probably again no surprise for us as they continue to try to control inflation and this has a lot to do with us as consumers and i think uh, we start we have to continue to remind ourselves we here in california are a bit different than the rest of the nation um, a lot of population a lot of income and thereby a lot of spending and so the shock to us as consumers um, is a bit to tell us to, by all accounts, stop spending so much. And the Fed, the Fed Treasury is definitely looking at the Fed funds rate and thereby interest rates to shock the system a bit. And those the term obviously we're all hearing, but it's really to tell us to hey, cool off a little bit and then the dip may not be as bad. And we'll talk about that coming up. But um, this is just that uh, kind of look and where we where we expect to see it. So it shouldn't be a surprise to those of us that continue to watch through the end of the calendar year, continue to hear about the Fed raising interest rates or raising the Fed funds rates, which then results in higher interest rates. The bright side, if, uh, if there was one from the standpoint of um, how this trickles back, hopefully this is uh, this is clear enough for everybody. Really, it's the lines here. So for California unemployment, um, if we were talking about inflation and everything else and unemployment was still really high, then we would have a large concern over how that's going to generate sales tax going forward. Given that, that overall California unemployment has been steadily dropping and relatively speaking back to pre-pandemic uh, points 4.3 percent California unemployment rate right now but really the graph below is to just give you some historical context to it we're back down to where we uh, would otherwise normally be and with unemployment being so low means that folks are able to get a job we know that wages are continuing to go up even if moderately speaking those of us may or may not feel those increases we do know for the greater majority of, of our economy that wages are continuing to increase balance out the cost of higher goods and that all means more money than to uh, to spend and keep the sales tax otherwise the sales tax economy um, fairly strong or at least steady because that's then where we start to look at uh, what we're anticipating this is a chart really quick that we had last quarter continuing again here just as we go with higher prices and strong demand Obviously, that means higher prices of goods, but so long as we, the consumers, continue to buy either about the same amount or even a little bit less than what we did previously, we still expect sales tax revenue to continue to be generated and stay otherwise in a growth uh, in a growth sector or a growth uh, growth trend. It may not be nearly as strong as what we've been experiencing. You'll see that here on the next couple of graphs, but it still should remain steady. So giving that away here, little context of this graph. Far left, you can see we're in the depths of the pandemic 2Q20. 
Um, the double digit gains we've been experiencing and talked about all throughout calendar year 2021. And now first quarter 22, right here at this strong 17.1% increase. How do we see this going forward for many of you as you look to 2Q in the wrap up of fiscal year 21-22 uh, for a lot of your agencies, we are anticipating about an 8.5% growth out of, out of 2Q. Given that 1Q was very strong, it probably means the forecast we did for a lot of you just last quarter probably are already on pace to exceed where we anticipated you to be. Um, Obviously, better to be on that end than on the uh, on the reverse or underneath chasing it. But um, with all anticipation now, we have fiscal year 21-22 to remain very strong. Then as we go into fiscal year 22-23, you can see strong through the end of the calendar year. Again, as we talked about Fed funds rate and thereby interest rate and that shock of the system may take a while for us as consumers to start slowing down a little. So we do anticipate the remainder of calendar year 22 to be fairly steady. And then the first glimpse, I'll show this to you again at the very end as we wrap up and we can even see fiscal year on a perspective, but it's the back end of fiscal year 22, 23, where we do anticipate these percentage gains to tampen down quite a bit, start to flatten out a little. And um, the perspective that I keep reminding myself and, and sometimes give to others is that um, when we go from double digit and high double digit for some of you agencies, when we go from double digit gains on sales tax into single digits and then possibly low single digits, that pullback, that slowdown will likely feel like a recession, especially when your expenditures are going to be up higher, closer to the double digit gains because cost of goods are higher, labor's, uh, labor costs are higher. So now we get back into that. Wow, wait a second here. Um, are we building in a recession is probably the biggest question we keep asking ourselves. No, but that slowdown compared to your expenditures might end up feeling like what we've all kind of known as a historical normal recession. So uh, again, I'll, I'll recap this at the very end uh, coming up. So again, percentage changes uh, over time, you can see just kind of marking those periods of the pandemic and the rebound and the pool growth, the dramatic pool growth that we have we had experienced during 2021. Now, even that's starting to uh, to cool off just a little. I think we got a little, a little pop in here. And the, the difference there between total um, uh, place of sale, actually, that's not the pools. So, so place of sale, local place of sale was uh, up 17.9. So the the gap there, the difference would be the results on pool, which Tracy will speak about in just a, just a little bit. So you can kind of see how that forecasts out. And now let's jump into the major industry groups. So I'm going to turn it over to Brett to start off with autos. Thank you, Bobby. And as Bobby mentioned, we, Tracy and I are going to start talking about overall better than anticipated news for every sector most of the sectors in this quarter are very good news, starting with autos and transportation in the first quarter. And as we start our discussion here on autos and transportation, we're comparing here the volume with the prices, and we continue to see record prices being set and volume declines, but the pricing is offsetting any volume declines in this group. And once again, the overall increase in new motor vehicles and used motor vehicles is combined with the really strong demand again, even better than what we anticipated, as Bobby mentioned. And that's primarily responsible for the overall increase in sales tax in this sector. So as we go through each sector, we want to tell you the story as we do in the individual client meetings. We're doing this at the statewide level, but overall very good picture. The prices. It, as I mentioned, record prices being set and continuing all throughout the pandemic, ongoing post pandemic prices have increased. And in this quarter, we're talking about today nationwide prices increased 23% in the first quarter compared to the same period a year ago. So really that is driving the story of the increase in sales tax. In terms of the outlook over the next 12 months, what we're going to see is production levels expected to 
drive the sales instead of the demand. So we've had really strong demand, stronger than what we anticipated all through the pandemic, post pandemic. And now as we head into future quarters and future fiscal years, we are definitely going to see a combination, but more led by production levels driving the sales. When we look at how that impacts the overall forecast, we can see that the actual results were 15% compared to 7% in this quarter. And we are projecting two more quarters. So good news in those agencies, especially that have the biggest percentage of your sales tax generated with autos and transportation, you're going to experience very likely we're projecting above average growth in sales tax for two more quarters. And then following that, as Bobby mentioned, we're going to definitely see a flattening out, a slowing down of the overall growth and annualized levels 3% in this sector all the way out to fiscal year 26, 27. So now we're gonna talk about fuel and service stations sector. Bobby mentioned really contributing significantly to the overall statewide picture in this quarter and even better than what we had anticipated and we had pretty strong growth built in. And what's happening, it's the consumption of fuel outpaced the production throughout the pandemic and now post pandemic. And that's really continuing to be the primary factor significant increase in sales tax received. We are anticipating this to remain high throughout calendar year 22. And we've had now seven quarters of drawing down on the stock of fuel. And now the EIA is forecasting consumption to be below the production through 2023. And that's really what we're showing in this particular chart. So in spite of the consumption being below the supply, it is still expected to continue to uh, exceed the, the factor here. As we look forward in the big factor, it also is driving prices and it's associated with the prices at the pump. The West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil price, their forecast, as we can see in this particular chart here, to remain above $100 a barrel through calendar year 2022, and then still going to be up fairly high in our overall statewide forecast. We have it at $90 a barrel through 2023. And what that means, how that translates to the sales tax is we anticipate it's projected each $10 increase in oil barrel is roughly a quarter increase at the pump. And at a national level, crude oil prices determine at least half of the price of each gallon of gas. So since the oil barrel prices are expected to remain high through the end of this calendar year on into calendar year 23, we are continuing to anticipate high prices. So we get the question often, what do we think, the, where do we think the prices are going? And prices, there's no indication right now that the prices are going to come back to normal anytime soon. Overall in our forecast then, mentioned the really good first quarter 22 and every factor is pushing the sales tax upward in this sector so that's including a restriction of supply coming from the russian ukraine crisis continued record oil barrel and prices at the pump and saudi arabia was anticipated and had made a promise to increase the production of global supply but they have been slow to implement that increase in the production. So that is continuing to provide upward pressure on the overall sales tax. And we're continuing to anticipate, and you can see it, the, the quarter that we're living in right now, we're almost done with the second quarter, but really strong demand continuing in road and air travel and people that are out on the streets. And really we're not seeing, especially in California, when we talk about global factors that Bobby mentioned, the macro factors, and then we drill down to California, our economy is continuing to visually, and we're seeing the factors at the pump and the sales tax grow really strongly. So now I'm gonna to go to the building and construction forecast. This sector, as you remember, had stabilized the quickest during the 
beginning of the pandemic continued to remain stable throughout the post pandemic. And now in this first quarter of 22, we realized results that were better, quite a bit better than what we anticipated. We had projected a 6% increase and the actual is 15%. So when Bobby talked about every sector coming in very strongly, building and construction was somewhat of a surprise in this quarter as well. And we've seen an increase in materials and plumbing and electrical equipment, and that is getting passed along to the owners. So the contractors have been passing this along. As a result, it's upward pressure on the sales tax received. The valuation of statewide construction permits in this particular quarter increased 13%. So once again, upward pressure. And at this point, our construction forecast shifts from neutral, what we had one quarter ago, to now more of growth over the next couple of quarters. And that is reflective of those factors I mentioned, the price inflation and the uptick that we've seen experienced with the statewide permit results. And as a result, we're projecting five and a half percent increases now over the next two quarters. And that takes us through the end of the calendar year 22. And then two fairly flat quarters in the first half of 23 and on into fiscal year 23, 24. After that, in our statewide forecast, we have increases of 5% annually all the way out to 26, 27. And we always mention in our individual meetings, we try to mention it during this webinar that we fine tune it to your individual agency when we're analyzing the results in any one quarter and we're looking at future quarters as well. Food and drugs, this has been a stable industry all throughout the pandemic. We've seen now post pandemic drops in grocery store, sales tax, drug stores, the cannabis related businesses that we had seen really growing strongly all throughout the pandemic. And we've now talked about it for several quarters of flattening out that's taking place. So the cannabis portion of this sector, the business sales have plateaued, they're back to pre pandemic levels. And really the only growth that we're seeing now is expansion of some, the same market and it's just being shared by more retailers. So we are continuing to project the same forecast that we had the last several quarters, but 2% annual growth, fairly stable all the way out to fiscal year 26, 27. And at this point, I am going to turn it over to Tracy. All right, thanks, Brett. So let's take a look at general consumer goods. This is a lot of the stuff we buy on a daily basis. Um, what you can see in the, in, just a, by way of introduction to the to the group, there are 28 different business types that comprise general consumer goods. And what you see in this donut is just um, kind of a depiction of each of those business types and what piece of the pie or donut they are, um, really just kind of a percentage of the whole. Overall, the group um, increased 10.5% from last quarter. And as you can see, the, by far the largest group in this uh, in this group, or I'm sorry, the largest uh, sector in this group are discount department stores, and they make up about a third of the overall group. So let's look at this slide. Um, I, you know, I just mentioned that the group overall increased 10.5%. Yes, it did. Let's talk about what drove that and what didn't drive that. So, in looking at um, this chart, what this is doing is it's tying each of these quarters back to 2019, using 2019 as a benchmark period and um, really kind of comparing each quarter back to the similar quarter in 2019. And as you can see, since second quarter 20, you know, that big COVID trough that we have all been, you know, we're all familiar with this. We've, we've seen nothing but growth in general consumer goods. A lot of this is, um, you know, we, we bought a lot of stuff during the pandemic and after, you know, at this period of time, still buying stuff. Um, many of the business types within general consumer goods have rebounded to pre-pandemic levels or are kind of gaining that momentum to get there. 
But despite an overall growth of 10.5%, most of the core um, business types started to slow down. Um, interestingly, all but one business type slowed in the first quarter of 22, which just kind of indicates some belt tightening as gas and food prices really started to spike during this period. So I would say kind of the middle of that first quarter period in February is when we all really started to feel that pinch. And you could just see this dip um, starting to happen here compared to 2019. So, for example, in fourth quarter of 21, uh, the results of fourth quarter 21 compared to fourth quarter 19 were 6% growth. When we look at first quarter 22 and compare that to first quarter of 21, it really is only 4% growth. So that growth is starting to, to, you know, taper off a little bit and hence this little trend line that we see here. All right, so I mentioned, <clears throat> pardon me, all but one business type uh, started to demonstrate some growth in the first quarter, except for one, one uh, killer business type, the largest one, discount department stores. So what's going on with discount department stores? Well, they had a stellar first quarter 22 performance. And frankly, they, they performed pretty well throughout the pandemic. These are a lot of stores that we did most of our shopping at early in the pandemic um, as we were buying toilet paper and other things. But um, first quarter of 22, just a really, really big uptick. And why is that? Well, uh, many of the retailers in this group uh, also have fuel operations as part of their operations. And as Brett discussed with the high price of fuel and continued increases in consumption, that uh, related sales tax revenue from gas really boosted up the discount department store results. So kind of a key takeaway there is even despite the high gas prices that we're all we're all really feeling now um, and it's adding pressure to our discretionary income, we're seeing a positive uh, impact on the general consumer goods group um, from a taxable sales perspective from gas. So even though Brett kind of covered that within the fuel group, we're really seeing some of that impact in the general consumer goods group as well. So looking uh, forward, let's look at uh, first quarter 22, we had projected growth of about 9%. It came in at 10.5%, as I mentioned, pretty close projection. Going forward in the upcoming quarters, low single digit growth, uh, from this group going forward, lifted a little bit in the short run here by higher fuel costs. Uh, we're still, at, um, as Brett mentioned, anticipating the price of gas to be higher. And that's again going to drive that discount department store revenue up. And then really kind of coming down a little bit in the out quarters and fiscal years. Higher prices, growing wages, um, wages continue to grow, and spending, we're still spending. We haven't quite stopped yet. <laughs> um, are keeping those sales tax level levels pretty, pretty high um, through fiscal year 22-23, and really anticipating that slowdown here, kind of the second half of 2023 calendar year, going into the 23-24 fiscal year. All right, so let's talk about the pools. I think we're officially in what? The third day of summer. So let's go swimming for a minute. Talk about these crazy pools. A lot has been going on in the countywide pools these past two years. We have had these discussions with our clients um, for the last couple of years. Let's take a look at this graph and we can really see, um, let's dissect this a little bit. We can just almost this bell curve of growth in the pools. So as a point of reference, the pools are comprised of revenues from all the sales tax groups. There's a couple that contribute more than others, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, 
you know, you can see this notable spike in the second quarter of 19 is related to the beginning of the implementation of AB 147 and the collection of sales tax from remote sellers, which is frankly all new um, sales tax. And then um, you kind of see a larger spike that started in fourth quarter of 19 and continued all the way to third quarter 20. Uh, th this is a couple things. Um, but it is largely the implementation of marketplace facilitators related to AB 147 and these facilitators collecting um, and remitting local taxes on behalf of their marketplace sellers or their third party affiliates. And this is all new revenue that came into California. And I guess on the upside, just in time for the pandemic, um, it really kind of boosted our sales tax revenues during the pandemic period. And of course, as we all know, the pandemic really changed our shopping behavior and really propelled us into online purchasing, which hasn't stopped, nor do we anticipate it to stop, but it has slowed down a little bit. We saw it in uh, third quarter and fourth quarter results. Um, you can kind of see that here slower than um, normal, kind of slower than previous growth, but it's not just that that caused it. Part of it is some taxes um, shifted out of the pools into direct allocation due to some business changes. And as a result, uh, we see that change here in the growth in the pools. So we see some reductions in pool revenues attributed to this change in um, allocation methodology. So you can see in fourth quarter of 21 right here, that this was actually a stellar fourth quarter return um, from uh, uh, buying or you know holiday season period, but it dipped 3%. And again, this is in part because of that shift of revenues out of the pools into direct allocation, and also in part because we all got off our computers and we went into the stores. We got tired of uh, looking at the screen and decided to actually be in the stores and touch things. So before I close off here, I mean, look at look at the first quarter 22, <laughs> big 13% swing up kind of flies in the face of the previous three quarters. Um, so what is driving that? What's going on in the first quarter 22? So looking at this slide, as I mentioned, there are a number of um, business groups that really make up the pool revenues. Business and industry and general consumer goods are two of the largest. And if you look at the business and industry revenues right here, you could just really see um, huge, huge disparity quarter over quarter. So what is that? What, what is causing that? Largely related to an infusion of capital into a number of sectors like energy, medical biotechnology, electrical equipment, and some of the heavy and light industry. A lot of big equipment purchases, um, in those manufacturing uh, arenas. So huge, fairly one-time revenues infused into that first quarter um, with that money to spend. So that really boosted up the pool revenue. So that's stuff being purchased from outside of California and coming into the pools. One other, um, and then just to point out general consumer goods right here, they are a large contributor into the pool revenue as well. And they actually you can't tell by the graph, but they actually declined. That group declined half a percent compared to a year ago. Again, just kind of um, punctuating the fact that as consumers, we did a little less online shopping and a lot more in-store shopping during um, the first quarter of 22. So one other um, unique pool revenue trend I do want to highlight, and it, hopefully you can, you can see it in this graph right here, is related to restaurants and hotels. So this is not normally a group that we talk about when we're talking about the pools, 
but it is now, and it's because of food delivery companies. This is a new trend, um, really emerged during the pandemic period. And candidly, we're all getting very used to it. So these third party food delivery companies um, are now complying with AB 147 and remitting their, their revenues into the pools instead of um, as direct allocations. So for those restaurants that are hiring these third party companies for delivery, um, they're losing, you know, that they're not receiving direct sales tax. Um, it's the agency is not where the restaurant is located. It's actually going into the pools. Uh, so that is just that's been a new um, kind of phenomena. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we look at the restaurant and hotels category. But you can see here, uh, really not a comparable. Um, this is a new new source of revenue into the countywide pools. All right. So looking at our projections for the pools, uh, we project a growth of two percent for first quarter twenty two. It actually came in at thirteen point four percent. Okay. We undershot that one. Uh, and again, the business and industry group really was the culprit there. That is where we saw that big swing come in. Um, but even with the first quarter 22 increase, we are projecting moderate growth going forward, uh, really three to four to five percent um, in the in quarter over quarter in the pools and fiscal years uh, going forward. Fulfillment centers. All right, let's shift over to the business and industry group. We've talked a little bit about this um, with its relationship with the pools, but now as a standalone sales tax group, business and industry, um, the fulfillment centers are 25% of that total group. So by far the largest. You can see in this graph, this massive ramp up of growth in the fulfillment centers. Uh, a lot of it, when we look at fourth quarter 2019 uh, to fourth quarter 20, uh, that is really attributed to the marketplace facilitators um, as they're reporting. Very similar to the trend we just saw in the pools. Uh, these two kind of mirror each other that way. And then up here, starting with first quarter 21, we see an additional ramp up of revenue. And that is that new infusion of revenue coming out of the pools into fulfillment centers to direct allocations. So due to some reporting changes uh, from some retailers, those direct revenues are now considered or I'm sorry, those indirect revenues are now considered direct allocations and that is going into this business type within the business and industry group. So you just see this really big growth here. When we look at first quarter 22 results, um, it's a 1% growth, which is about what we had anticipated, uh, really normalizing kind of where the revenues are uh, year over year. We do anticipate a pretty, you know, moderate growth in fulfillment center revenues going forward, um, one to three percent. But we do anticipate it to remain at this higher level now that, um, you know, we've kind of made that shift in some of those revenues out of the pools into direct allocation. All right, looking at the group as a whole, this is a motley group. <laughs> it has kind of like general consumer goods, although these are a little bit more disparate. There are 21 business types and they range from heavy and light industry, um, manufacturing and equipment like farm and agriculture, electrical equipment, all the way to wineries and motion pictures, really diverse. And of course, um, very different for every agency, for each one of you. The top 10 business types are depicted in this slide with the exclusion of fulfillment centers. We've pulled that one out. We just we spent a lot of time talking about those guys. These top 10 kind of led by the medical medical biotech industry 
And then we have heavy and light industry in here, electrical equipment. These are some of the bigger business types within this group. These top 10 averaged 13% growth in the first quarter of 22. So pretty sizable growth in this group. Again, a lot of infusion of capital uh, for a lot of equipment purchases. So for the group as a whole, we have projected first quarter 22 growth of 5%, 5% came in at 10%. So we were a little bit, little bit low there. Really looking at moderate growth going forward, um, averaging around four to five percent quarter over quarter, and uh, you know three to five percent in subsequent fiscal years. Looking to slow down just a little bit um, with some of the supply and demand challenges that the industrial sector is definitely facing. And I know that Brett talked about that a little bit with regard to both the auto industry and fuel, we definitely see it in the business and industry section too. Although there's still a lot of demand, it's just supply that's been slow to respond. Um, so given that, still anticipating some reasonable growth in the out years. All right, let's shift gears entirely and talk about food, which is my favorite topic. Um, so what's going on in restaurants? A lot, <laughs> a lot is going on in restaurants and it's not, it's not all great. It's it, this is a, this is an industry that's been hit pretty, you know, one of the hardest hit during the pandemic, really struggling to come back again. You can see, uh, in the, in the summary here, labor is one of the biggest headwinds that restaurants are facing labor shortages. CNN um, indicates that restaurants um, are understaffed, or I'm sorry, 70% of restaurants are understaffed. It's a huge percentage. Um, and similar with hotels, they're also feeling that labor squeeze as folks are just, they've exited this industry, the service sector, and they're just not quite back again yet. Food delivery is another um, Another area that is impacting restaurant revenues, and I mentioned this when we were talking about the pools, so let's just highlight it here again. Uh, because food delivery now um, through marketplace facilitators, these third-party delivery companies, those revenues are going into the pools. They're not going directly into restaurant direct allocation, so we're seeing a little bit of erosion there. And um, that, that delivery, food delivery is here to stay. We're kind of liking that. We like our food delivered to our house. And um, so we're getting, you know, we're getting our, our food delivered home. And the California Restaurant Association recently got wine and beer permanently allowed to be delivered. Um, and they're working on cocktails. So pretty soon you're going to get your margarita delivered to your house too. And, um, you know, that really is just changing a lot of what's going on with restaurants. Less of us going into the restaurants now since we can get more of the good stuff delivered to our homes. Menu prices continue to rise, but um, are not keeping up with the wholesale price of food. So that is definitely a headwind. And all of this stuff is just squeezing restaurants. We're seeing closures, we're seeing reduced hours. Uh, definitely seen service kind of erode a little bit, which is unfortunate. The industry as a whole is estimated to have lost $47 billion since the first quarter of 20, so two years ago. Looking at the forecast for restaurants, um, we had projected growth of 45% for the quarter, uh, came in at about 40%, so fairly close. Still still growing um, compared to a year ago, but starting to, to feel the pinch of um, some of the headwinds that I just mentioned. Menu prices are contributing to sales tax growth because uh, we're paying more when we go, um, but labor, labor shortages are reducing service capacity. Hotels are lagging in recovery. It is an industry that's really feeling the squeeze couple of things that restaurants have done to help kind of boost and, and move them through this, this period 
implementing technology in the restaurants. So many restaurants were paying um, on our own and, you know, the self-serving kiosks to make payment. That That is um, reducing the need for some labor. Menu options have been reduced. Um, you know, it's a cost savings measure, less food that needs to be purchased, really kind of streamlines operations in the restaurant kitchen. Personally, I appreciate the reduced menu. Uh, when I'm hungry and I go to a restaurant, I get decision paralysis if there's too much on the menu. So that's just me. But um, overall, the industry is just really feeling the, the constraints related to labor, the cost of food, um, definitely some headwinds, very moderate growth going forward. We've kind of rebounded mostly from the lows in the pandemic and are looking at fairly moderate growth um, going forward for restaurants. And with that, I am going to turn it back to Bobby to just kind of tie it all up. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Tracy. Appreciate that. Yeah. Restaurants category, definitely a resilient bunch, right? They were able to weather the storm of the, po of the pandemic and post. And right now, really seeing those dramatic gains, it'll be an industry that will make the changes necessary to keep uh, to keep thriving. And that, I think, is what we can all appreciate, uh, especially out of our beloved restaurants, right? <clears throat> so tying up a lot of what you heard me at the beginning, Brett and Tracy, you can see here, middle of the screen, where we anticipate fiscal year 21-22 to finish up strong statewide about 15 percent and to be honest and i know a lot of you guys are in that same boat with us uh sometimes we can be too conservative or a bit on the conservative side if it uh, comes in higher we may not even be surprised given the strength of the economy still even with some of those um, other pressures or potential headwinds which i'll talk about uh, next slide then looking forward, 22, 23, you can see us slowing down our forecast. No longer double digit gains. Can't keep running at that. It is going to be later this calendar year when the Fed funds rate interest rate hikes start to really take hold. Um, the prolonged summer period of higher gas prices while generating more sales tax could inevitably lead to consumers starting again that pullback how much are consumers buying relative to high prices and everything if they start to buy less then we start to see sales tax uh, growth peel off then as we look forward you can really see here in the fiscal year 2023 20, 24 what might feel a little delayed uh, there you see us really slowing down down into that one percent range and and again reminding of what i mentioned earlier is when we're only growing sales tax statewide at one percent but we know expenditures are likely to continue to grow at any pace this will feel more like a recessionary period or a slowdown that everybody's going to have to readjust their balance sheets or their budgets too so um strength through 23 22 23 cooling off 23 24 once we look outward, um, we're getting back to more of the historical normal growth range because we anticipate the feds will then temper the Fed funds rate as they see the economy uh, cruising along. And every as consumers, we all start to then readjust to what otherwise might be prices at that time. I'll uh, refrain from the comment that I think we all hate regarding the norm. Um, <laughs> so, so that's kind of where we're at with our longer term forecasts. Um, as Brett made mention during the presentation, anytime that we update your local forecast, we're always taking in these bigger picture statewide type of uh, trends and thoughts and breaking it back down to you, the local agency, and what uh, sales tax demographic you have. Are you heavy on autos, heavy on business and industry, more reliant on restaurants? We'll consider all of that to really customize your forecast. So then here, just the final thoughts, the bullet points, and a little bit of a recap. Um, going back, this will probably be the last time we really reference fiscal year 2021 as that, you know, post-pandemic, we grew 11%. Many of us sat around forecasting 21-22 going, can it get any better? Absolutely, 100%. We, uh, we to date, were up 17% over a year ago. And that trend then continuing into the second quarter, finishing off the fiscal year, like you just saw, the headwinds as we all 
kind of will acknowledge, right? Inflation remains high, gas prices, you heard Brett talk about that. We know there's upward pressure there. Uh, translating over to consumer spending and drastically, uh, dramatically rising interest rates playing a part. What does it mean then? Consumers likely to save a little bit. Well, consumers have been saving less, drawing from uh, their, their accumulated savings post pandemic and credit usage is starting to go up. So overall household debt is there, but property values and thereby being able to tap into equity is still available even within a, a higher interest rate environment. So there's access there allowing, we think then the consumer sediment to not go drastically lower, um, much like what we experienced back during the great recessionary period uh, for a lot of us, right? So that's where we think some, uh, most of the overall economy will remain strong, especially business and industry. And as Tracy mentioned, the change over that we've all been uh, talking about and experiencing from overall pool back into local uh, direct allocations for fulfillment centers and others. Modest growth for the next two years is really kind of that. Are we building in a recession? It's uh, it's more related to just moderate growth and even in a cooling off from what we've been experiencing. That's it, we'll uh, kind of go through, uh, we didn't have as many questions in the Q&A, but please feel free to use the chat feature right now. If you have some questions, some thoughts, even if we're not able to address them here within the body of the webinar, we'll be able to reach out and uh, get back to you. One very great question that we had earlier uh, from Roland, whoops, let me, let me scroll back up and find it. Uh, Roland uh, Mendoza had a question with regards to um, all of us are hearing that the federal government is proposing to put a pause on um, the excise tax, federal excise tax with relation to gas and gas prices. And uh, thankfully enough, we've got Michael Coleman joining us on the webinar in the chat feature. He uh, he had a nice uh, response there given is California going to put its pause and is there then going to put on our on our local excise tax, statewide excise tax and is going to put uh, have an effect on um, HUDA funding. Uh, if you haven't already, go look in the chat feature. Michael Coleman's response to that is that California's budget was passed back on June 15th, and um, the gas tax uh, for the year under SB1 went into effect uh, as scheduled July 1, so no pause there. And that's pretty much what you know, Governor Gavin Newsom back in probably April, May, putting out there that we were not going to put a pause on it. Um, how that and some of what I take from that is how then is it going to affect sales tax? And as you can all imagine, um, yes, a federal pause on uh, the excise tax portion will cause gas prices to go down. That's likely to leave more money in the pockets of consumers. Now, however, they choose to use that, whether it be you know kind of reestablishing savings or going out to eat at a restaurant, especially if it hits during right now the summer period and summer travel. Uh, we've got a lot of people expected to hit the road, even with higher gas prices. If that gets cheaper, it gives them more money to spend wherever they might be going. And that goes back to restaurants and local tourism for a lot of our um, coastal communities where, you know, yeah, the beaches are always a draw. So we could end up could end up helping sales tax receipts, even though we feel this pressure. We know what it means uh, when people you know feel like they can spend more. So. Uh, keep a watch out there. It'll only be a good thing uh, for our economy as we see it. Um, not much else in the Q&A. So at this point, we're right up next to the noon hour. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, appreciate your time. We're glad to give this information out. Again, so blessed to have so many of you as a client as clients. Look for your next meeting during the July and August months. We'll be talking to you. Um, great job for all of you. If you're still right there at the end on getting your budget adopted, hopefully through the end of the month, you're able to finish off that process. And again, that July, August period for our sales tax will likely hit you just as you get ready to do your accruals and get ready for year end closing. Uh, so more on the horizon for many of you. 
uh, feel free to reach out here at the last slide. You'll see the contact information for myself, Brett, Tracy, everybody else on the team that you guys know that are happy to come out and meet with you. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns. We'll be uh, happy to help as much as we can. Uh, that's it. Thank you guys again so much, and we'll be looking forward to seeing you very soon. Stay safe.